It's been a long road Getting from there to here Let me be up front with y'all. I'm not a Trekkie, I'm just a Scott Bakula fan. But even I, with rudimentary Star Trek knowledge, can safely say that Enterprise is a pile of hot, steaming garbage. As I sift through the interminably long episodes of this mess, I feel my sanity slowly slipping away. At times, it feels like maybe the universe really is a boring, horny expanse. Maybe women do randomly lose their shirts during important missions. That's just how life is. Who knows after Enterprise has melted my brain like ice cream on a hot sidewalk. The basic rundown, Enterprise is the Star Trek prequel series that killed the franchise until the movie reboots. It was meant to be the adult Star Trek, which basically boils down to assholes having sex in space. There's a whole host of other problems, but the biggest disappointment is really the lost potential. You've got a great premise and great actors, but it's bogged down with a lot of bullshit. And in a series that most Star Trek fans rank the lowest on the totem pole, A Night in Sick Bay is considered the absolute worst episode. In fact, it's credited as the episode that killed the franchise. Now, I can't vouch for it being the worst ever because I was bored by a lot of others, but I can agree that it is so awful it's unreal. Just to prep you for how bad things are gonna get, A Night in Sick Bay is a continuation of the episode where the crew fights a giant pile of space semen. By the way, there's an episode of Enterprise where the crew fights a giant pile of space semen. So anyway, in the Space Jizz episode, the crew unintentionally peeve off a race of aliens by eating in front of them, something they consider vulgar in their culture. In A Night in Sick Bay, Enterprise visits these people to make amends and get an important replacement part for their ship. Knowing that this is a race that is very easily offended, Archer decides it's a good idea to take his dog along, something he has never done previously because why would you? Lo and behold, Porthos upsets them by peeing on their sacred trees. I shit you not, this is only the tip of the iceberg. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First there's this. Starfleet didn't send us out here to humiliate ourselves. Time into episode 14 seconds. You might think introducing a decontamination gel for the express purpose of getting the actors in their underwear semi-regularly is sleazy and transparent. Okay, but for real, guys, can we not exploit Archer's dog like this? I'm super uncomfortable. This was their highest rated episode up until that point, and it starts with Scott Bakula being slathered in glitter while he loops up his dog. And those undies are just... riding right up in there. Doc will have you good as new before you know it. I might even break the no cheese rule tonight. Enterprise tries to make the Porthos eats a lot of cheese joke happen for four years. It's never gonna happen, Enterprise. Anyway, Porthos has picked up some sort of pathogen on the trip, and he's gonna spend a majority of the episode in the dying box. Oh, look at the dog! He's so cute! I don't need to remind you that Commander Tucker is relying on us. There are some things more important than plasma injectors. Are you referring to your pride? Turn down for what? Trained diplomat Captain Archer is informed about the tree pissing incident, and when told to Paul apologized for him, he gets upset. Trained diplomat Captain Archer is mad because the race gets too easily offended and don't act like Earth people, forgetting that dog pisses on sacred tree is less of an uptight alien offense and more of a regular kind of offense. Trained diplomat Captain Archer says the aliens should have checked if there was a pathogen that his dog's body couldn't handle in the air, and it's their fault. Trained diplomat Captain Archer refuses to perform their proposed act of contrition. Trained diplomat Captain Archer takes back any sort of apology and proceeds to spend the rest of the episode whining like a big xenophobic idiot instead of just swallowing his pride and apologizing, even though they need this part for their ship to run. Trained diplomat Captain Archer. If anything happens to Porthos, I'll be the one watering their Alvira trees. Trained diplomat. We are trained diplomat. Oh, look at this, folks. He's having a pissing contest with the second in command to prove how big his dick is. It's great. He proceeds to angrily watch water polo because he is the whitest person to ever white, tossing a ball around like a kid who's just discovered his parents are getting a divorce, probably thinking up some more zingers about him whizzing on things in retaliation. Gosh, he's so likable. It's been a long road Getting from there to here At least the show knew Porthos was the best character, but that fake dog they use is so jarring. 
So Archer decides to spend the night in sick bay with his dog while Dr. Phlox goes about his sick bay business. Oh, here we fucking go! It's Laugh-O-Rama on the Enterprise, folks! Now they're trying to catch a bat or something? <sighs> I don't know. But lest you forget this is Enterprise, there is one topic of conversation Phlox seems particularly invested in. How long has it been since you were intimate with the woman? What? Yes, Captain. Tell me the stories of your wang. Your dog's life depends on it. <sighs> yeah, so a lot of this episode is going to be dedicated to Archer being in denial over how hot he finds T'Pol. This presents numerous problems considering his character in the overall series, which would take a novel to get into. But just believe me when I say this is sexist and bad, with a capital B. On the surface, it might seem strange to juxtapose the dying dog plot with repressed sexual desires, but the two things are more connected than you might expect. I'm hunting an escaped bat. That's all I'm thinking about right now, Doctor. Bat and Porthos. Sexual tension, Captain. There's no doubt in my mind. Even Phlox is calling him out for wanting to get with his dog. To bid the final farewell to a faithful and kind colleague. He would never hesitate to offer his paw. When one person believes their sexual attraction toward another is inappropriate, they often exhibit unexpected behavior. How long has it been since you were intimate with a woman? <laughs> I am losing my damn mind right now! In a show full of ludicrously bad ideas, I think dog funeral nightmare that turns into a sex dream might be the crowning achievement. Someone wrote this! They performed it! I don't even know how to process what I just watched! God, poor Scott Bakula, my dudes. I mean, I just can't even with this dialogue. To give him credit, he can sometimes give even a character as repulsive as Jonathan Archer some endearing qualities. Good lord, listen to this. Sorry, I'm a little on edge. I haven't slept very much, but I'm doing the best I, the best I can. <laughs> I hate this show. UPN Wednesday. I haven't slept very much, but I'm doing the best. The best I can. The captain explores new territory. Does this go on every night? I obviously can't keep up with you. Sexual tension, Captain. Uh-uh. One hell of a night, hasn't it? You've got to see it to believe it. God, why? But wait, medical emergency. Time for things to get real, folks. I'm going to try and break this down for you all. Porthos's pituitary gland has disintegrated. So Phlox is going to super hydrate him by placing him in a big tub of goo, which will temporarily drown him, and alter a space lizard's DNA, which will allow him to transplant its pituitary gland into Porthos. I don't know anything about medicine, or space chameleons, or beagles, but all of that seems wrong. You know, this isn't some guinea pig you're working on here. This is Porthos, my beagle, my pal. Let it be known that on October 16, 2002, Emmy Award-winning actor Scott Bakula was forced to say the line, Porthos, my beagle, my pal. Just for the sake of argument, let's say that some of my anger toward Paul had a component of sexual to it. God, please stop talking about how you want to bone to Paul while performing surgery on your taxidermy juice dog! After a good old goo chat, which involves some character development from Phlox, Archer realizes he's being an idiot and should just apologize to those alien dudes he pissed off. Well, this is a nice turn for the character, an actual apology that can hopefully mature it. What the fuck is this? What am I watching? Why is Scott Bakula in dreadlocks with a chainsaw? Who is this for? Don't, don't wink. What is this? Please, please free me. And Archer and T'Pol pretend their potential romance isn't creepy or something. The end. Much like Enterprise as a whole, A Night in Sick Bay has some good ideas and some god-awful execution. A bottle episode like this can be great for smaller character moments, and this show desperately needed it. And a plot that actually calls out Archer for being a jerk-ass and making him apologize was a fantastic idea. Unfortunately, it amounts to Jack-all, and he goes back to being a big ol' space racist for seasons to come. 
The obnoxious attempts at comedy, the uncomfortable sexual angle, and overall unlikability of our lead character is just so difficult to sit through. The sheer incompetence on a narrative level is laughable. That funeral scene damn near killed me. I have no idea who this should be marketed to, and neither did the show. I can't say there's a lot to recommend here. If you're a Scott Bakula fan, just stick to Quantum Leap, because man, I'd sure like to Swiss cheese enterprise.